Hey folks, today we're gonna investigate speaker coverage with a crime scene. Here I've mapped out a little bit of a laser tag neon setup, illustrating what it looks like with a speaker's coverage. Because anytime we choose a speaker, we're saying, hey, it's fitted for this particular purpose because of its tonality, its weight, its power. But a huge thing that impacts what we choose it is how it's going to cover. And this is primarily in high frequencies as we're going to discover. But there's some general rules of thumb and ways we could think about coverage that I want to share with you today that was revolutionized and shared with me from Bob McCarthy in his book. Uh, so this is definitely not my, my own personal property here, but I think it's just a really helpful framework that I want to share with you today. So we're going to be talking about four key positions and walking through them step by step, hopefully with a helpful layout and diagram here. So let me first walk you through our little setup here, then we'll jump into smart and start, start taking some measurements. I've got a cute little QSC K8 right here. It is a 105 degree wide speaker, and that's also its vertical coverage. So it is turned upside down because we're doing a ground plane measurement and I have its tweeter closest to the ground. So then I've placed four microphones throughout here. My first one is my green microphone, my A microphone. This is on axis. This is directly in the center of the speaker's throw and it is six feet out. My next microphone, and we'll call that on ax near. My next microphone is on ax far. So I've doubled that distance and this is my orange microphone. So this is six feet, this is on axis and 12 feet apart. Now we're gonna move on to off axis. So this is my pink microphone. This is, if it's a 105 degree speaker, we split that in half off axis. And well, what is that? That is the minus six dB edge or half the energy off axis in the high frequencies for any given speaker. That's where the, the industry settled on for speaker coverage. And that's where we have right here. And then we have last our yellow right here which Bob McCarthy calls his minimum variance line. So within a speaker's coverage, we can go to on ax far and walk in a straight line all the way over here to off ax. And we're gonna see the minimum amount of change. So we're gonna take a couple measurements along this line and see if that is true. So the point of today's video is to not say, hey, look, the KA is the best speaker in the world or the worst speaker in the world. We're just looking at its simple spec of 105 degrees of coverage, looking at these few key positions and then moving forward. Now let's take some measurements of our microphones and step through them one by one and digest the characteristics and the total balance that's gonna change depending where we're at in the speaker's pattern. So let's capture all four and then we'll step through that data. So turn on my signal generator with G. I hit the track all button, sync them all up. Hit my normal transfer function view would see this, my impulse response at the top, my phase graph, and now my magnitude graph. I'm not gonna shut up so I don't cloud the data and then capture it. Just gonna call it K8. Hide all these guys and then let me rename, rename them something useful. These are our four traces. Gonna drag them over here, hide what's going on here. And now we make this window a little bit bigger for us to be able to see what's going on. So here's our on ax near measurement. Again, this is not to say like, oh, look at how great the K8 is. This is a ground plate measurement in the near field. It's not ideal conditions for this, but I just wanna show what happens to the total balance. So on ax near is gonna serve as our basis or kind of our reference measurement. Again, we're just six feet in front of the speaker directly on the center of the speaker's throw. So what do we think is going to happen when we move twice as far away or 12 feet away? And that's our on X far measurement. So if we're familiar with the inverse square law, it means that we're gonna lose half our energy for every doubling of distance. And that's what we have here. We're doubling the distance. So now let's look at this trace and see if it is indeed half the, the level. If I put my cursor here right at 2K, I can see at the top, it says negative 2.5 dB. So if I'm gonna look at a 6 dB drop, I should be minus eight, minus eight and a half. So if I select my orange trace, there it is. We're here at negative 7.86, so not quite minus eight, but we're seeing across the entire board, all frequencies, a halving in level. So this is a law of physics. We can't escape it, right? Um, so we can learn that about a speaker if we move double the distance away from a reference point, we're gonna lose half our energy. So that's on X near, versus on axis far. Now let's look at our next measurement, off axis. 
So again, we arrived at this particular placement of the, the, the microphone because we knew, I guess QC published, that this is a 105 degree wide speaker. So if we move from the center, cut that in half, so 105 divided by two is 52.5 degrees off axis and we're pointed right back at the speaker. So the industry decided, again, that that should be the minus 60 dB or half the high frequency content at that point. So let's look at that. So that's our green on X near versus our off X. And again, this is six feet in that direction. So it's not at the same depth. It's the same count. We just took a line, drew it out to right here and then anchored it over that way to that mic position. And that's what we got. So that is off X. So indeed we see the low end tracks really similarly, because again, it's really similar distance. It's, they're both six feet away. But as we move up in frequency, we see the high frequencies start to vary a lot with the most amount of variance we see here right at 2K. And then things get a little bit squirrely above that as well. So that's what we can expect from any speaker for the high frequencies to drop off, even if we're at the same distance as we move to the edge of the speaker's coverage. Again, this is a 105 degree speaker. If we got a really narrow 60 degree speaker, this would be at the 30 degree edge. Uh, and so in anything in between would be true. So now let's look at our last measurement and this is minimum variance. So this is halfway between these two points of on ax far and then off axis. So we can see this is where we see the least amount of change as we walk through the speaker's coverage. So if I'm standing here, again, half the level of on ax near, as I walk this line off to this edge, that's going to be the least amount of tonal change. So let me do that. Let me take two more measurements, one a little bit closer right here with just this microphone and one here, and we're going to see the least amount of change. So we move this guy. We'll still point him at our speaker. Go back to mic D, kick him on, reset our delay. Let's just say D, take two. Now I'll move it even out a little bit closer. Point it here. Reset my delay. D take three. So I'm gonna hide everything and let's just look at the original minimum variance measurement in here and here. So the take two is a little bit farther, a little bit closer. You see how those traces line up? That means, again, along that line is the least amount of variance. And we can know that about a speaker. So if we're trying to line up a speaker's edge along a surface, if we put it in the air, if we flip the speaker over, that's why we have certain coverage characteristics about speakers as we put them in the air. All right, so to recap, every speaker is gonna be published with a certain amount of coverage specs. Is it 90 degrees, is it 45? They all have different jobs and roles. We can choose a reference point, an arbitrary amount of distance. It could be six feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, whatever. Have it as on ax near directly in the center. We can double that distance, get to on ax far, and that will be a halving in level once we get to that point. And that's gonna be broadband across the entire frequency spectrum. We can now go to the edge of the speaker's coverage by taking the coverage pattern, cutting it in half and moving off axis and going the same distance as we did with on axis. So if that's six feet, take a line, bring it over six feet from the speaker. And this should be the minus six dB edge of the high frequencies. So low frequencies are gonna be similar, but we're gonna see this drop and hopefully leveling off. Now, if we take a line and draw it from our off axis edge all the way to on ax far, there's a minimum variance line. And so lining this up with an audience plane is gonna create the most even experience. Thanks for hanging out with me today. This is illustrating speaker coverage a little bit easier with a crime scene investigation. My name is Michael Curtis and I'll catch you next time.